Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share with you. So really quick this morning, I'm going to try to make this quick because I'm running behind. I done caught a little hell this morning. So anytime I catch hell, I know this is a word that I I got to give y'all today. So let's jump in. Happy Tuesday. I want to talk to you really quick today from the topic of the wheat and the tear. The wheat and the tear. What am I talking about today? Let's jump in. I think this is the on time word, especially with the holidays coming, because many of us are facing exactly what I'm talking about today. Let me give it to you real quick and then I'm going to let you go. Turn with me your Bibles to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Let's go down to the 24th verse. Matthew 13, 24, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner of servants came to him and said, sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. This is the NIV. The King James Version talks about the wheat and the tear. So in this scripture, in this translation of it, it's talking about wheat and weeds. King James Version calls it wheat and tear. Let's talk about that today. What is this parable saying? Because it really can apply to a number of things. And I want to apply this to what many of us are going through uh, this time of the year, holiday season, because this is the time where we go around our loved ones, right? People who are close to us. Many of us ain't going to go break bread and sit down with somebody who we know are our enemies. Instead, we're going to the people who we call our loved ones. Let me give you an example. So if you go to work today and there's a new employee and the new employee says, dang, I don't like her outfit. She don't need to wear them pants like that, right? Well, a, a normal, rational, healthy-minded person would say, who cares what you think? Who are you? You know, I don't care whether you like my outfit or not. Why? Because you ain't important. You a new employee, as my mama would say, some Johnny come lately, right? You don't matter. And if you don't matter, what you think doesn't matter. But if your best friend that you've been working with for 15 years comes and says that, it's going to sting you. Why is it going to sting you? Because you were close with that person. That person matters to you. And so because they matter to you, what they think about you, what they say about you and to you, and what they do to you actually matters. Why? Because they matter to you. Many of us this holiday season are going home to be with some family and some loved ones. And this is the time of year where we seem to remember many of the things that were done to us. Many of us are going to go home, the family members, and we're going to sit at the table with the, uh, the family pervert, the family pedophile, the one who molested you, the one who molested your mama, the one who molested your daughter, the one who abused you, the one who beat on you as a child, the ones who mistreated you as a child. We go home and everybody can remember what was done to everybody else. Everybody else got stories to talk about. Oh, it was so bad what they did to your sister. Oh, it was so bad what happened to your brothers when they were growing up. It was so bad what happened to your mom and your dad when they were growing up. But poor little old you. Nobody seems to remember what was done to you. These are the things that we are facing this holiday season as we get ready to go home to family, friends, and loved ones. I just read you a Bible story about the wheat and the tear. I want to give you another scripture to bring this thing, give it a little bit more context. This is what Jesus said. Turn to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Go down to the 34th verse, Matthew 10, 34. Many people don't know this is in the Bible. It's time to learn. It's learning time today. Do not suppose. Now, this is red print. This is what Jesus said. 
Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. How hurtful is that? That the people who you started off with as little babes, your siblings, your used to be close cousins, people who you grew up with, y'all started off the same. Siblings, little cousins, friends of the family, you started off the same. And yet, here it is, you've grown up. Now, everybody looked the same growing up. It started off, everybody was seeds and everybody looked the same, but something happened. As the seeds started growing up, guess what happened? One started looking different from the other. Guess what happened? It looked like everybody was weak, right? It started off, everybody looked the same. But as y'all started growing up, right? Guess what happened? Now you're seeing that everybody ain't the same. It looked, everybody looked like weak when they were growing up. But as you grow up, you're starting to see that some people were not actually weak. They were actually tear. And in the NIV translation, what they called it was weeds. See, you look the same, but as you grow up, you start to see differences. Why is it that the people who you grew up with, the people who you called family and close friends, why is it that those very same people were the ones who turned against you? Why is it that these were the very same people, the people who you helped, the people who you loved? You thought that y'all were the same. You thought y'all were on the same team. But something happened as time went on, because time is going to tell all. What's done in the darkness will come to the light. And what's really in a person, just give it a little bit of time, and time will tell it. Why is that? Why is it that it's not the strangers who come against you? It seems like it's always the people who you care about. The reason why it is that way is because the enemy, let me give it to you in scripture, 1 Peter 5, 8. Let me get that real, real quick because I want to give you scripture today. Hold on. We're going to flip and flop a little bit today, but I want you to get this. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I love to say, don't let it be you. Why is it that it's always the people who are close to us, the people who we grew up with, our family, sometimes your mama, your daddy, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, family, friends, people who you've been tight with for years. Why is it that they always seem over time to be the ones to stick it to us? It is because your enemy is going around looking for somebody to, to devour and he understands that if a stranger does it, you'll get over that quickly. Because why? Because they didn't matter. But the one who matters to you, if they do things to you to hurt you, that's going to be a stinger. This is why our family, our friends, our, our close friends who we thought, our loved ones, siblings, this is why... As we grow up, we started to look like we, and we all look the same, and we thought we was on the same team. But as you grew up, you started to see that, hey, you're weak, but they're weeds. Y'all are not the same. You're not on the same team. It is the God in you. And every time there is someone who has God in them that hits the scene, guess who else comes and follows? Satan. Adam and Eve. What happened? That was something that God had created. God was talking to Adam. God had created something good. And guess who came? That old serpent. When Jesus went in the wilderness, for, I think it was 40 days, 40 nights, and he went on that fast, guess who showed up? <laughs> Satan. Guess what? When you have God in you, guess what's going to happen? The people around you, Satan is going to be looking at which one he can send evil spirits in to come against you. 
Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials that you are under. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. And so if you are still dealing with trying to figure out why is it that the people who meant so much to you have turned against you, it is because they have a breakdown. And what they don't realize is they have a breakdown that has allowed the enemy to come into them and use them to come against you. Why you? Because you are the weak, right? And he understands that you are different. He understands and he can see it a mile away that you have God in you. And his goal is to devour you, to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy you. And he understands that you don't care about some, uh, some stranger being your enemy. Who cares about them? They don't matter to you. But the people who you hold dear to your heart. Many of them will allow Satan to come right in and use them to come against you. But it's something that I want you to remember, and I'm going to give you the scripture, and I'm going to let you go today. Because the scripture said when it came to the wheat and the tear, let them grow up together. Because when the time is right, when it comes harvest time, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be a great separation. And many of us are going through that great separation right now. We're holding on to these loved ones. We're holding on to these friends. We're trying to make it work with them, not even realizing that we're going against the grain. God is trying to separate the wheat from the tear, and we're holding on to them. But God calls us to forgive these people who have done things to us. Why does God call us to forgive them? Why did Jesus say when they were crucifying him, forgive them, Father? Father, for they know not what they do. I'm going to give it to you in scripture today. Ephesians, I believe is 612. I didn't have time this morning to, uh, to make notes, so bear with me if I'm wrong, but we're going to find it today. Ephesians 612. Let's get there. This is the NIV. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That means people, right? But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So when your mama is conspiring against you, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Why? Because it's not them, it's the spirit operating in them. Now there is consequence to pay for allowing Satan to use you because we know right from wrong. God has put that in us, right? Because he created us. We got it in us. We know right from wrong. There is consequence for allowing Satan to use you, right? But nonetheless, God tells us to forgive them, right? Why does he say forgive them? Why did Jesus say forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do? Because he understood the spiritual realm and he understood that our, that our problem and our fight and our struggle, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, which is man, we wrestle against the spirit that is operating in them. So don't think that it's strange when people who you hold dear to your heart are coming against you, doing things to hurt you. That is the plan of the enemy. And the enemy wants you to be bitter, harbor unforgiveness, so that you can get out of right standing with God. Instead, forgive them as hard as it may be. Just like Jesus said when they were crucifying him, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. The people who the enemy is using against you, there's a reason why he chose them. He chose them because they matter to you. So think it not strange when people who you have been kind to, you have helped, your close cousins, when they do things to try to destroy you, don't take it personal. Release them and forgive them. Love them anyway. That don't mean bend over and let them keep having their way with you, but love them, forgive them, and remember, to say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And remember also that God has called you to be set apart. He has called you to come out from amongst them. He has set an appointed time for the wheat and the tear to be separated, the wheat and the weeds to be separated. There was a time for that. These things must happen. It's all part of God's plan. And remember, Romans 8, 28 tells you that it's all gonna work out for your good. Even the things that don't feel good, it's going to work for your good. Love them.
Forgive them. Remember that it is not them. It is the spirit that they are allowing to operate in them. And there is a reason why Satan has chose them to come against you. It's because they matter to you. And the things that people do when they matter to you, those are the things that really cut deep. But that's okay. It's all part of the process. Remember, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're wrestling against evil spirits. And God has set an appointed time for the wheat and the tear to be separated. This just might be that appointed time in your life. I love you. I hope that word blessed you. I am Grace Amber. Happy Tuesday. I'll be right back on tomorrow with another word. Good Lord willing.